historic uh, Tom Moore shop on the Lynx Little Avenue next to St. Andrews. Yes, and we're with we're with Lori Watson. He's the communications manager for Tom Moore's. And when he's standing right in front of the fireplace, that was this would have been part of uh, Tom's original shop. So he actually launched his company in 1848, but he opened this shop in 1866. Uh, so this would have been the fireplace where he would have kept himself warm over the, uh, the 18th green of the old course, which is just out the window there. Um, so through the, uh, the long winter days and nights we have here, he'd have probably warmed himself and possibly even done some work in terms of uh, he would golf clubs here. Just took over the, the shop in 2010. Stripped it right back. Uh, took away all the the, uh, the shop fittings that it sort of built up over time here. We found the original stone floor where you can see the score marks where you can strike and shaft the golf clubs that you made. You know, to get them ready. That's literally and, what those marks are for. That's what those marks wow. Are. Some of them over here beside the door. Some of the stories go that. Uh, that, that when he'd finished making a golf club, what Tom would do was occasionally, if, 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 the, if the chance allowed it, was even drop a golf club and picture ball from 18th Street. So some of the marks might be for that, but these these detailed indentations are really where he was striking the shaft. It's a perfect old pitch shot. There's, yeah. there's the, the flag for 18. That's maybe why he went for open championships. He was practicing. So then some of, I guess, this is a flagship store as well as having house in the collection. It's also a little bit of a museum and a, a tribute to Tom. When we were stripping back the shop front again, we found his original locker here. And these are clubs that were actually, that bear Tom's name. So they've got a signature on them, which was, he was a real innovator in terms of he actually put his names in the products that he made, which if you think back to sort of the 1860s, 1870s, he was, uh, he was ahead of his time when you think of. Nowadays, we just, uh, we expect golf products to have Names and signatures on right. them. So he was a real sort of a So It's a little bit about his timeline, and we've got lots of little pictures of him and his family as well, because that's, I think, the history is part of you know, really, really important part it's, of the It's collection. just a great building, and the whole story about uncovering these relics is, is fascinating. And we still have his great great granddaughter, who's the last in the world, like he lives just in his lap of the country as well. So she's a regular. So. He lived up there as well? Yes, there's okay. a small, narrow, it's almost this runs along this section of the building, it's a really narrow gallery. And I guess back in those days, I mean, they had five children, but uh, himself and his wife probably didn't sleep together, so the wife would have been in the bedroom with the kids. And Tom had a little single bed mattress that was just a little corridor here, and that's where he sort of laid down his head each night. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the, the products. The clothing, sure. Yeah. What's what sells? What's what sells? the hot item? Oh, everything sells. But um, what are really popular, specifically here in St. Andrews, are these uh, the polo shirts. So this is the Nair Icon polo. Uh, you can see the range of colours we've got for this is our, our spring summer collection for 2014. And um, we're just about to take delivery of the, the autumn winter collection. Um, but these are all shop collection that, uh, that he would have used back in the 1860s. These are the, the replicas of the kind of original labels that Tom used on the products that he, he created. And then obviously we've got the, the familiar sort of the image of Tom there, you know, a way to strike the show. And that, that image came from a, a photo yes. of him? Yes. That's a real keepsake, so obviously yes, that's absolutely. why. Yeah. Good. Okay. And I think there's a cashmere jacket. Yes. Um, when we launched the first collection in Orlando in January 2013, I think uh, we attracted a lot of attention with our, our blazers because they really stood out. It's, uh, I remember it. Yeah, the whole yeah. display, or the yes. whole booth is what got people talking. Yeah, and I think this, this really caught a lot of people's uh, eye and imagination. So we've kept that running through the collection just You've got the, uh, the Tom Morris tartan inside with the uh, the four colours, which represent the four open championships that he won. So we're kind of always trying to tell the story of Tom. That 
tartan was made just for the Tom Morris name? Specifically made for Tom Morris and it's registered with the land name that the tartan actually came from. I don't think I realized that it represented the four yeah, championships. We've, we've put a lot of thought into each yes. of the little details that we try to, to bring the story through. You know, because we can stand all in his garments, but we really want to tell the story of Tom behind everything that we do. So, you know, the, the tartan is a good way to tell that story. Tell the story about the signature on that cap. So this is uh, the signature. This is uh, you can see there in detail. So again, we've replicated that on a lot of the flat caps and some other elements. Um, again, this was just taken off of a, a paycheck. A paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> so we just. Hopefully, the checks don't count. If it hasn't by now. No, yeah, right. It's, it's good. Uh, good. Well, Laurie, thank you so much my for pleasure. Thank you taking the time. Nice.